Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about potential Hurricane Elsa as it wrecks havoc on the Caribbean and aims for the Gulf early next week. So if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. This is the latest advisory from the National Hurricane Center on Tropical Storm Elsa and is up to 45 miles an hour. It's actually picked up a little bit of speed up to 28 miles an hour moving west, northwest. You can see where it's located back behind the Lesser Antilles. This will continue moving off to the west, northwest, going up to a 50 mile per hour tropical storm. And that's why they've got Tropical storm watches and warnings taking effect for the Lesser, Lesser Antilles. So this will continue uh, moving across into the west, northwest, bumping it up to a 60 mile per hour. This is the official track from the National Hurricane Center. I would actually estimate this is somewhat conservative based on some of the guidance that we're going to be going over. Uh, but nonetheless, this is the latest track from the National Hurricane Center. Takes it just north of the island of Jamaica by Sunday morning, and this will continue lifting off, getting into the Gulf of Mexico by early Tuesday morning by Florida. So we've got a lot to go over. First, uh, let's take a look at the overall Spanish version. So for the people that are listening to me that don't speak English, you can take a pause right now and read this to get the latest update. So I definitely don't want to leave anybody out on this latest update from the National Hurricane Center. So as we go forward, uh, this is your latest watches and warnings out from the National Hurricane Center. We've got uh, tropical storm force of watches in, in uh, or places like Grenada and to St. Vincent, uh, St. Lucia here. Uh, these All these islands in the Dominica, all the way into, even into portions of St. Kent's could be seeing some tropical storm force winds and even into uh, Barbados here. Uh, that's going to be, you're going to be feeling the effects of it first with some 45 to 50, 55 mile per hour winds by early tomorrow morning. So this is already knocking on the door and this will continue uh, moving across. You can definitely see by early Saturday, you can already kind of be being experiencing tropical storm force winds as early as Saturday morning into the island of Jamaica, into the Dominica Republic. As this continues moving across into the west northwest, and this actually could be looking at tropical storm force uh, winds all the way into Cuba by Sunday night, getting into Florida by Monday morning with those tropical form force storms, uh, you know, light conditions. So let's take a look at this: how the Hurricane Center like gets this data. So tomorrow morning, the uh, the hurricane hunters are going to be flying out into the eye of the storm. They leave from uh, Lakeland Lender International Airport by Tampa and Florida. So they got a long ways to travel to go all the way into the Lesser Antilles, but they do this to bring important data to us and how they depict this. They fly about 10,000 feet up in the sky and they actually fly into the eye of the storm and they have these what they call drop zones. And uh, they uh, kind of like missiles, they drop it down and have a parachute. And this actually sends important data back by satellite down to the uh, National Hurricane Center so they can give us the latest advisory. So they actually, over a two hour, two hour period, they do what they call this Alpha X form formation where they send and drop, you know, go through multiple areas and different directories so they can actually get a true depiction on all different angles of the storm to get a, a, an actual, uh, you know, the wind speed and the nose. And this little nose right here, that actually measures the wind speed and the rainfall that's currently happening to it. So it's pretty cool that these hurricane people that get to actually fly into the eye of the storm. And some of these, you know, depending on how strong they were, this is how what it would look like from the actual cockpit of the airplane. So they've got multiple members in there and this is an actually true picture of what it looked like when they flew into Hurricane Dorian. Uh, you can actually look up and look in that cylinder, the kind of the dome effect and, and, and just like an awe because where the eye is, that is your calm center. So, but it's a rough 
flight actually go into the eye of the storm and they experience in that calm and then they fly into the other side of it so it's a definitely a bumpy ride for those people so they definitely put their lives on the line uh, for us to send you know data back to the national hurricane center you know of course depending on how strong they get and th there's been several times that it's just been not safe and they've had to actually turn around when some of these you know stronger category five type storms that they're actually having to fly into so they're, they're definitely going to be on the going to be flying into the system by early tomorrow morning and give us a true assessment uh, as it goes towards the lesser Antilles and sending satellite data back to the National Hurricane Center, kind of give us a true depiction on what's really happening with this storm. So we actually take a look at the big picture. This is what how it's going to play out. We've got a cold front, and these are going to be your major players on how they're going to be the steering mechanisms from uh, you know Elsa down here. So this is going to be our cold front. This is a slow-moving front. And in fact, they've got flash flood warnings and watches for, for much of the central U.S. and actually parts of the uh, Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast with some very heavy rainfall as it takes its sweet time shifting all the way down to the south. We've got a big dome of high pressure. That's actually going to be our steering mechanism for this uh, potential storm. We've got 95L down here by uh, down in the Western Caribbean. That's no longer the case. And that's at actually eliminating some of the drier air as it's moving ahead. And But our main player is back behind here. That's the Lesser Antilles. This is actually Tropical Storm Elsa right now. But look at the conveyor belt of just waves coming off the African coast. This is very unusual, not only for so early on to the season, but also so far south that these are actually coming off the coast of Africa. So this is very concerning going forward, especially with the dominant high pressure. They call it the Bermuda High. That's gonna be what they call our steering wheel for these storms to track further off into the Caribbean and eventually probably gonna be impacting whether they become a storm or not, uh, you know, rain, additional rain showers as we go into you know, deepening into July. So that is definitely very concerning that we have such an active season already off uh, the Cape Verde uh, Islands. So as we go forward, here's the latest track. And these are all the models. And it's actually shifted a tad bit off to the west. So some of these actually had these taken out to sea, but that's no longer the case, which I thought was going to be true because this dominating high pressure of the Bermuda High is going to be steering this off to the west, and there's not going to be much for them to for, for, to allow this system to go northward. This pretty much takes it over the Western Caribbean, essentially probably in and around the island of Jamaica, uh, by Sunday, and then this will get into, in fact, the, the, the Cayman Islands as well. So you definitely have to be on the lookout for that. It's probably going to be crossing Cuba, but then it's going to be entering the Gulf of Mexico, probably in a five-day time for period, sometime on Monday, going into Tuesday morning. And once it gets into the Western Gulf, uh, that's where we're going to have to start really paying attention uh, places like into Florida and to the southeast coast of the United States because the steering mechanism will bring this into the Western Gulf and possibly being impacted with Florida and then going up the Southeast coast as we get into the middle of uh, next week. So if we take a look at the latest uh, European ensembles and the GFS ensembles, finally the European kind of woke up and kind of came to its senses. It's not taking really this out to sea any longer. A lot more ensemble members are kind of get, getting, getting to the you know de de depiction on this is actually gonna keep further south from what they were looking at earlier and more or less on board with the latest track from the National Hurricane Center and much of the model depiction. So this is, the European has actually shifted a lot further south than what earlier they were looking at. And the GFS still continues to shift most of the guidance into the Western Gulf of Mexico. And that is definitely concerning uh, going forward. So, but if we take a look at the intensity guidance, now grant you the latest advisory from the National Hurricane Center only has this going up to a 60 mile per hour tropical storm. It's only 45 right now. So it's only about 15 miles an hour, but you can see based on the model guidance, that's why I feel like this is, they're somewhat conservative in their outlook that uh, yes, all of them have it a tropical storm, but at least more than half of them have it going to a category one 
hurricane even as early as uh in two days from now by hour 48 that'd be two days that would be you know, going into sunday morning but some of them actually have it going all the way up to a category two hurricane and there's been some that's actually increased it to even a major hurricane so a hurricane is not out of the question that is definitely a potential with this system as we go forward because there's not much shear to work with and it's got a lot of open waters in the western caribbean it's got a lot of breath with that bermuda high so it's got a great potential to continue strengthening the only inhibiting factor the national hurricane center is worried about is the forward speed because it's just going so fast it doesn't feel like it can wrap itself around and kind of get congeal and get, get in a consolidated center for an extended period of time so they're going more or less on the more conservative guidance as of right now as they until they have a little bit more concrete evidence that it, to bump up that uh, potential uh, assessment so, but if we take a look at the latest uh, gfs uh, guidance yes it has a formidable hurricane a formidable tropical storm as it goes into the lesser Antilles. Right now, it's a 45 miles an hour. It's probably going to be more or less 50 to possibly 55 miles an hour by early tomorrow morning, impacting Grenada, uh, Bar Barbados, all these islands and the lesser Antilles as this continues uh, shifting off into the west northwest. And if it continues going forward, yeah, the latest uh, GFS has this pretty much right on the cusp of the island of jamaica by sunday morning i stopped it right here this is the wind speed and these are maximum wind gusts upwards almost 76 miles an hour so you could be feeling some wind gust up to hurricane force conditions by the time we get into sunday morning at least on the northern tip of the island of jamaica as this continues uh moving across into the west northwest in fact, the hurricane models are even more bullish on this system. The reason why I show you this one, because it's proven themselves over the last two years with these two hurricane models, it almost nailed it verbatim with Iota, with Zeta, and Ada last year on the strength of these hurricanes that, that impacted much of the Caribbean. So yes, this is definitely concerning that this particular model is actually showing a possible 107 mile per hour wind gusts by the time we go into Sunday morning, just north of the island of Jamaica. So you got to take this uh, in consideration that this could really ramp up as we go into the next uh, several days. And the latest uh, HMON, which is the other hurricane model, almost implies the same way they're fairly bullish on this system going up all the way to a 91 mile per hour uh maximum wind speed just on just on the cusp again right along just to the north of the island jamaica would be crushing the northern parts of of the island with some very heavy rain and then as well as uh, winds going into on sunday morning and throughout the day so if we take a look at some of the precipitation guidance and there were some of the rainfall rates yeah, these purples are pretty extreme. So if not only you're gonna be impacted with the wind, but you're also gonna be impacted with the very heavy rain over an extended period of time that's gonna be causing numerous issues with mudslides and landslides. This is Sunday afternoon. This is, this is Sunday morning, basically right on the cusp of the island of Jamaica. This will continue moving across. And all these reds here are easily two inch per hour potential of the atmosphere uh, rainfall rates. This boundary right here, that's the line of your cold front. It's actually going to start. It's a very, very, very rare situation to get a cold front so far south this late in the season. But that's going to be the case. So that's going to be your cold front bringing very heavy rain across uh, Houston, much of the southeast part in central, central Florida by the time we get on Sunday as this potential tropical storm, potential hurricane will continue moving across. If we move it one more frame as we get into Monday morning, this eye could literally be over the Cayman Islands. I had a lot of people question, hey, is gonna be in Cayman Islands gonna be you know impacted from this particular storm? Yes, definitely. So definitely be on the lookout for potential hurricane force conditions as well as copious amounts of rain 
over the Cayman Islands as we go into the day, Sunday night into Monday. And this is a fast mover as it continues moving across into uh, to west, northwest. And as we extend the view, yes, it could subside a little bit as it goes over the mountain regions of Cuba. But since it's going so fast, it's not going to be able to tear it apart that much as it crosses over Cuba and goes into the Western Gulf by the time we go into Tuesday morning. So by the time we go into Tuesday morning, Key West could be inundated with some very heavy, very heavy winds, very heavy rain as the southern tip, Naples, you have to be on the lookout for the western side of Florida by then. And if we extend the view going into Tuesday night, going into Wednesday morning, some of the latest guidance has it pretty much right on the cusp of the west west coast of Florida. So if you on if you're in Florida, you definitely ought to be on the lookout for this particular system. It's only Thursday, so you got plenty of time to watch this for the US, but definitely it has the potential to be a major threat for the US. If you take a look at the, some of the guidance and some of the wind speeds, this would be a, uh, the latest update would be an 86 mile per hour wind gust by the time we go into Wednesday morning on the latest latest uh, GFS model. So, so yeah, and this has been pretty consistent for several days in a row to put it in the Western Gulf and take a look at some of the rainfall. This would come to fruition. Not only are we have dealing with this, a lot of the, the heavier winds, but very heavy rain. And look, and look at the graph down here. Some of these whites and grays, those are depicted almost double digit totals. So yes, this is a serious concern as you're going through the, the, the weekend into Jamaica, into the Cayman Islands, into Cuba, and the west part, western parts of uh, Florida as we go into uh, er, uh, you know early next week with this potential storm of Elsa. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. I will continue to keep you updated and to keep you ahead of the storm. Uh, please like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.